Hi guys, it's Sam here today. And today we are gonna just do a get ready with me. I have a palette that has been in my shame pile for way too long that I wanna use. It's the Sorcerer Palette for Fantasy Cosmetica. I have one of the Gucci blushes that I thought would go with it really well. And we're just gonna chat about what's going on. And yeah, let's just get started. I haven't been filming that much long form content because I feel like it's a lot easier to just go with the flow and do the shorts or the reels. And also I haven't been feeling like 100% all the time. I'm tired a lot. We're gonna go in starting with the Flower Beauty Skin Smoothie Power Matte Primer. And <laughs> this is quite a name. I'm really enjoying this. This is a product that's drugstore price that I feel is really high quality. And I've been enjoying this a lot for my T zone area. So, yeah, I have been not feeling 100% for a long time. I think when things happen in your life sometimes, or at least for myself, I like to kind of suffer in silence. I also, because I'm a mom, or maybe because I'm a woman. I think women were kind of used to, you know, this hurts, that hurts. We just live with it because we have our periods. We have so many other things that we just take and don't question. And also being a mom, like if I'm sick, by the time I call the doctor and get to the doctor, I'm already feeling better. And then my kids sometimes will have something overlapping and it's just like, it's more important to take care of them. I put myself on the back burner. I'm gonna go in with this L'Oreal True Match. I have the shade six through seven tan. So I have like a couple of these because I don't know, I, I go in and out of love with this thinking that the shades are just not right. I just think because you can see they have like that pearlescence to it, but it's kind of icy and I just don't love that. I don't know why I get so hung up on that, but I do. And the pump on this never works. So I just swipe it like this. I'm the only one using this. So here we go. I haven't used this in ages. So I really want to like give some love to some of my older product and not just always be obsessed with the new. There's been so many foundations releasing and I just kind of been telling myself, no, 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 no. Getting back to what I was talking about was, I don't know, I feel like ever since I had my youngest daughter, who's about to be eight, I've had like a series of issues where whether it was like a period of months feeling like I might have had some IBS kind of situation that cleared up on its own. I've had issues with sleep and I've had issues with just not feeling well in general. On occasion, I will just feel feverish. I will feel very fatigued. I will have body ache, chills. My temperature will, my body temperature will kind of rise, but it won't ever be like an actual fever. And at first I thought it was just hormones that, you know, like something that will happen when I get my period. But then like after it happened so many times, I think like the first year, I realized like not every time that it happened was with my period. So, and it was happening more frequently. I couldn't really quite put my finger on it. I was complaining about the fatigue and, you know, the issue with the body temperature and the chills and stuff was that I didn't actually have like a full-fledged fever. I never went like past like 100. It wasn't like something that could be like a really red flag. You kind of look at things like they're all different things, not necessarily that they're all related. And I wasn't always consistent about like calling my doctor every time something was wrong with me too, because I didn't want to be like, I hate to say it, I worked in a doctor's office for over 15 years. You don't want to be that patient because sometimes you do get kind of flagged as like a a person who's always coming up with something. So I think I had like a little bit of like self paranoia about that. This is my Too Faced Born This Way concealer in the shade Sand. So I wasn't really looking to take care of myself because I was more afraid about kind of having a reputation of being somebody who's sick all the time. So I kind of just lived my life like that. And there's been periods of times too where it didn't happen for months. And then I was like, oh, maybe it's gone. I'm better. My sleep issue kind of resolved itself. Even though I had like literally months and months of crazy fatigue, you know, it's like, 
I'm just happy that I don't feel that way anymore. And some of it, you're kind of like, okay, I'm getting up in age. Maybe I'm premenopausal. Also, you know, I have three kids, you know, maybe I'm just tired because I work a full-time job. I have three kids and I'm over here trying to have a YouTube channel and have a life. And, you know, maybe I'm just overdoing what my body is actually capable of doing because we're all just trying to do, you know, squeeze everything in in such short hours of the day, you know, especially when you dedicate so many hours of your day to work. So I was just like, maybe I'm overextending myself and I'm just having like burnout and a lot of things resolve itself. But 2001, I had this experience where I woke up in the morning and my face was swollen. I actually didn't realize because this was a time where I was sometimes not really wearing makeup to work because you know, we were still dealing with COVID at work at the hospital. Sometimes in the morning, I would just, you know, get ready, brush my teeth and walk out the door and not even look at myself in the mirror. And I remember that day because I got into the office, I'm working, I'm logged into my phone, you know, I'm drinking my coffee. And one of the doctors walked in and he was like, what's wrong with you? Are you new on prednisone or something crazy like that? And I was like, what are you talking about? And I took a look at myself in the mirror and I was like, holy crap, my face was swollen. So I called my doctor. So I ended up going to see my doctor and she gave me an EpiPen and was like, I want you to see an allergist. I ended up seeing an allergist. We thought maybe initially I was eating like some Mr. Good bars that maybe it was peanut related. They tested me for a peanut allergy and it was negative. This is where I kind of start putting myself on the back burner. My youngest had a foot injury like within a week of that happening. My son broke a picture frame and didn't pick up all the pieces of glass because he couldn't see it. And she stepped on a piece of glass. It literally cut her foot on the center of her foot where your foot bends from here to here, like all the way across her foot. So she had to have stitches and we had to bring her to an orthopedic doctor and make sure she didn't cut any through any tendons and she had to be like in a special boot so she wouldn't put weight on it so the stitches could heal. It was like a whole ordeal and for weeks and weeks and I actually ended up like canceling the follow-up appointment to the allergist after I got that the peanut allergy was negative because I was like, well, I'm not allergic to peanuts. This thing is gone. I have an EpiPen if I need it. I'm just going to move on. I know that's like a horrible thing to do. But at the time, felt like that's what I had to do. 2022 in the spring, I wake up in the morning and the same thing. I think I have a photo from this one and I'll insert it if I remember editing Sam to put it in there. I'm going to go in with my Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Intensity 2. So last spring 2022, I wake up in the morning and my face is swollen. And this time it's more swollen than what happened previously. Don't call the allergist. No, I don't. I wake up in the morning, my face is swollen. And what do I do? I take an Allegra. I go to work. I sign in to work because I work from home. I sign in to work and live my life and wait for the swelling to go down. And I don't think twice about it. I assumed because I do have an allergy to cats that at the time we had two bunnies. Um, I've gotten, I've rehomed my bunnies since then. We had two bunnies and they spent a lot of time in my bedroom with me, just keeping me company during work. I assumed that somehow maybe I got bunny fur on my face or something in my sleep. And that that was the cause of it. This is me self-diagnosing, kind of not wanting to take care of myself. I don't know. I just thought, didn't think much of it. I was really trying to just not have a problem. And then over the summer, that happened in March of 2022. So as the warmer weather came, I started getting these weird rashes anytime I would go out in the sun. And this happened mostly in the beginning of the summer, like June and July. I would get these rashes like on my chest and I would get them on my legs. And the ones on my chest looked a little bit like hives, you know, were a little itchy and I could put cortisone cream on it. The ones on my legs, though, they almost looked like I had, I don't know, I, I described them as like lava. <laughs> it, it's not lava. They just look like marbled, like marbled print on my legs. 
and it would like be really bright red. If I have a photo of it, I will insert it. Basically, my legs would turn really bright red and almost like purpley red and they would be so crazy itchy, but my skin would still be flat. It wouldn't be like any kind of lumpy kind of rash or hive or anything like that. And I kind of just put it off to being like, maybe I was just sitting too long in the sun. I really just didn't want to put much thought into it. I think I was in a bit of denial. A lot of times I would just come in the house and after like an hour, it would pretty much resolve itself and I would feel fine. Although there were a couple times where I was like, oh, I feel like I have sun poisoning, but I wasn't really outside that long. Like, I don't really understand. And I would complain to my husband, but I would be like, I don't feel like sick enough to go to the doctor, to call, to go to an urgent care. And if I call my primary care, I'm going to get an appointment for tomorrow or some other day. And by then I'm not going to feel like this. So that's the problem sometimes with healthcare. It's like, when you have an issue and you don't feel like it's emergent enough to go to like an emergency room or an urgent care and sit there for hours and hours, and especially when it resolves itself at home, and then it's like, well, do I make an appointment and I go into the doctor's office and then I can't really show them what's going on. They have to just take my word for it. And I just felt like there's no way they're going to believe like I had this rash on my legs two days ago from sitting outside. Like that's not a real thing, you know? About a week ago, I'm going to go into this blush. It's the number nine intense plum. She's really more pink. She's more like a mauve pink than a plum. And she's a little bit scented, but it's not very strong at all. I really have to like put my nose in there to pick up on the scent. So if you're sensitive to scents, you might not like it. But honestly, I don't think it's that strong. And I have a pretty good nose. So we're going to apply a little bit of this. But yeah, so basically a couple weeks ago, I had already had an appointment for a sleep specialist. A couple of years ago, I had issues with sleeping. Not a couple of years ago. Maybe it was like, I feel like it was definitely before the pandemic, probably 2019. So I had a sleep study study back then and I had like mild sleep apnea. It wasn't so much that I wasn't breathing, but that I was taking just too soft of breaths, basically. The doctor I had saw at the time recommended a machine, but honestly, like I used to work with doctors who did uh, a lot of weight loss surgery for patients and a lot of them had sleep apnea. And they were like, well, your numbers are really not that high. Like you don't really need a machine. So at the time, I just blew it off. Recently, my dentist recommended that I get like a mouth guard. And he was like, you should definitely go see the sleep specialist because if you do need a machine, I'll have to make you a different mouth guard. So I was like, OK, I'll make an appointment and just see what they have to say. So I went to see the sleep specialist and he was like, oh, you don't need a machine. Um, I don't think you need to repeat any tasks. You're good to go. And I said, oh, well, you know, I have this question. I woke up the other day looking like this and I showed him the picture. I'll, <laughs> I'll insert that. Definitely. I have a picture of that. And I said, and I looked like this and I took an Allegra and it went away. But like, I don't know why this keeps happening. This has happened several times. And he's like, good question. You know, this is not my expertise. But the reason why I brought it up was because his office was in a lung and allergy <laughs> clinic. So I was like, well, maybe he knows. So he was like, I don't really know um, what that is, but it looks like angioedema. But to figure out why you're having the angioedema, which is the swelling that you're having in your face, you really do need to have more thorough allergy testing. So he's like, wait a second, let me talk to a co colleague. And it happened to be the same allergist I had seen way back in 2021. And she recommended just taking an Allegra every single day till till she could see me because she was giving me an appointment, but that he could run some blood work to check for other allergens in the meantime. So I go get the blood work done. I wait for my appointment, which is like two weeks after that. I'm just thinking maybe she's going to find some kind of allergy in there that I'm not realizing that I'm exposing myself to. Maybe it's dust. Maybe it's some kind of pollen that I'm not really familiar with because I do live in an area with conservation land right behind me. So there's lots of woods. 
And there's all kinds of trees and bushes and everything like that back there. Plus, I have trick chickens. So I'm like, maybe it has to do with the chickens. Maybe it has to do with, you know, all these other things. We're going to go into this palette. All right. I think I know what I want to do. We're going to go into the shade here first. That's Unleashed. I go into her office and she's like, yep, you're having this thing called angioedema. And what you're experiencing, I'm showing her pictures of some of the rashes I had on my chest, some of the rashes I had on my legs pre from the summer, last summer. And I'm like, even one time I showed some of those pictures to a friend, I had a, some other weird kind of rash. My friend's like, that looks like bug bites. But I was like, we don't have any bugs. Like I was checking the dogs for fleas. I was checking the yard. I was like, the fleas can live in the grass. So I'm like telling my husband, maybe we should treat the grass. Maybe we need to smoke out the yard. Maybe it's some kind of mosquito biting me. Like I was just getting all these kind of weird things. I'm thinking, I'm showing her these things. And and my I brought my husband with me because I'm like, I told my husband, I was like, I don't want to be one of those wackadoo patients. And I know it sounds stupid to say that, but it's true because I need somebody to cur to corroborate my story. I feel like I'm having all these weird rashes and unexplained things and I don't understand it. And I feel weird telling it to a doctor because I know what it's like when I worked in a doctor's office. Not every person is like this and not every patient's like that, but every once in a while you come across a patient and you just assume they're crazy. And I hate to say that, but it's just the honest truth. I brought my husband with me because I was like, I just need like support. You know, I'm showing her the pictures and, you know, we're talking to her and she's like, I read everything in your chart, you know, all the things that you've had going on, blah, blah, blah. Because it's not that I didn't call my doctor doctor any of the times I was having issues. It's just that I didn't call her all the time. I didn't want to make a bigger thing of things than it was, you know, and if I went to the office and she was like, oh, maybe you just have an upset stomach, I'd be like, okay, you yeah, know, sure. I kind of made up reasons in my mind. Like, you kind of make up excuses for things that you kind of want to go away. You don't want them to become a thing. Personally, I feel like maybe I do that because I just can't handle another thing. You know what I mean? Like, we have so many things going on. It's like, I don't need any other thing going on in my life. I have enough going on. She kind of looks at me and she's like, yep, I looked at your chart. I looked at everything. And I honestly think that you have a case of chronic hives. It has to do with the sun. And she's like, I'm looking over the chart and a lot of the things that you have going on tend to result, revolve around warmer weather and being outside and that time of year, I have a feeling that your issue is the sun. And she's like, I think you have this thing called solar urticaria. And I'm like, what the f is that? What are you talking about? She proceeds to explain to me that basically it's not quite an allergy, but it's like an allergy to the sun. It basically makes my body produce histamine, which is causing the rashes, fatigue, and headaches, and body aches, and feeling like I got sun poisoning because I have basically the sensitivity to the sun. Immediately, my husband's like, we're going to Puerto Rico this summer to see our in-laws. Like, my dad lives in Puerto Rico. I have siblings there. And we were planning to bring the kids because my grandmother passed away and last year and I wasn't able to go. I didn't even say I'm going into this purple shade called Empowered. So we had bought tickets and everything to go this summer and take the kids because the last time we went to Puerto Rico, my youngest was only one and she's going to be eight. So they don't really even remember. And my grandfather is still alive. So we're like, you know, it'd be cool for them to meet their great grandfather. And like that way, like. I don't know. They have a memory of that because now my grandmother is gone. My husband immediately says to the nurse, like, what are we supposed to do when she goes to when we go to Puerto Rico? Like, because the thing is, is like, am I not supposed to live my life? You know, so basically the plan is right now is I take an Allegra every day. If I plan to be outside, go to the beach, anything like that, I need to be covered up, obviously, wear sunscreen, like clothing. Basically try to cover my skin as much as possible and double up on the Allegra. If I like have any more issues with the angioedema, even with the Allegra, then I may have to get these injections, like allergy shots kind of a thing, to kind of block the IgEs because 
that's part of the problem. Honestly, when she first said it, I was like in shock because in my mind, like I love the sun and I'm the kind of person like that as soon as the warm weather comes, like I can't wait to see how tan I can get. Like I always wear sunscreen, but I tan literally if I walk to the mailbox, I'll get dark. So it's like I just love being in the sun. But once she said it, it all really made sense to me. And it made me realize like how much denial I've probably been this entire time because I feel like I low-key kind of knew that it was the sun. It's just like so sad because I feel like how am I going to live my life? Like basically like in the winter, it's not going to be too hard. I mean, I live in New England, so it's not going to be terrible because I'm inside a lot. And most of the time in the fall, the spring, and the winter, I'm in long pants and long shirt because for me, it's too cold. Even when it's like 65, it's too cold. I'm going to wear pants. I'm probably going to bring a sweatshirt with me, whether I wear it or put it on my waist. I always have a sweater with me. It's just the summertime that's going to be hard because for me, it's like I live for those summer months because I'm I'm cold all the time. So I'm like not happy, <laughs> obviously. We're going to go into illusion. It looks green there, but it's like a blue. You can see the shift. So we're going to go into that and just put that all over the lid. It's so pretty. Personally, like, it's just sad. It's really sad for me to kind of have to go through this right now. She did say like 40% of people who do have this go into remission sometimes. So like there is a chance that, you know, it could go away or at least I can get like a little break from having to worry about it. But I have already had one day with a rash on my legs on top of the face swelling. So I'm kind of like not very hopeful that this is going to be my year. In fact, I I'm a little worried that it's just going to progress because I definitely like 2021, I only had one incident. And then last year, pretty much the whole summer, I had rashes on my legs and stuff. So it's mostly on my thighs because I like to sit on the deck on my lunch break and just sunbathe and close my eyes and pretend I'm on a beach somewhere. So no more doing that. I have to sit under the umbrella. My husband, like, he likes to make jokes all the time. So it immediately goes, you're not going to need all those foundations because <laughs> you don't, you're not going to need all the different shades anymore. I'm like, yeah, I know. Thanks. And you're no help, buddy. It's kind of crazy to me that that's happening. And I've told a couple people, like, I was talking to a neighbor and I told my mom, you know, it's funny because like the first thing everybody comes out their mouth, it's like, did they test you for everything? Do they really know? It's like, well, yeah, I trust that they know what they're talking about. They did do blood work. They tested a bunch of stuff. I did look at the labs because I got like a, my chart. I feel like my chart's pretty nationwide at this point. There's some kind of digital medical record, electronic medical record system everywhere where I did see the labs and most of the allergies were very low. The only thing I had kind of high was ragweed and cat. And I don't have a cat anywhere near me. My in-laws have a cat and they haven't been around my house in months. I have barely even seen them recently because they spend a lot of their free time traveling back and forth to Florida. We don't see them that frequently. So I know it's not cats and ragweed is a thing for the fall. That's what the nurse said around here anyway. So it's not something we would be seeing at this time of the year. And I'm already having some things going on. So I do believe she did her due diligence. It's just going to be taking some getting used to. I looked up some like YouTube videos. There are some people like online who've made videos talking about their experience. Unfortunately, the videos that I saw were not very promising. They were like, some people just wearing sunglasses and hats and scarves and like completely covering themselves. And it's like, I can't picture myself living my life like that. That's gonna, I think if it gets to that, like I'm definitely gonna be like, sign me up for the injections because I don't picture myself living my life fully covered 24 seven. 
I think I would be really miserable if that's how I would have to live. I think I want to be extra. I'm going to put this one on the center of my lid. I'll put this one on the inner corner. So this is Polymorph and this one's Arcane. I mean, I am grateful though that I have some kind of answer because I think I would have been more upset leaving the office, not having any clue what's going on with me. Like the more I think about it, the more I'm like, you know, be grateful that we know what it is. Because basically, like, what if I went to some amusement park and I'm standing in line for 40 something minutes in the sun and I have some crazy issue where my face swells up, my body breaks up in hives. And, you know, she did say that, like, it could be dangerous. I will have to, like, carry an EpiPen and stuff like that just in case something like that happens. But, like, knowing that, I'm not going to stand at a line for 40 some minutes somewhere. Let's start my eyebrows and stop talking so much. And this is just an hourglass pencil that I've been trying to use for the last 17 million years of my life. And it's going to take another 17 million years. That's not even all the way up, but um, this is not a favorite product. It's not bad, but it's not a favorite product. If you like this, girl, it will last you an eternity, an eternity and a day. So basically, now that I know that, I can just be safer. You know what I mean? I did notice last summer too that like, you know, I couldn't take the heat as much. I would get headaches and stuff, but I thought, you know, I'm just getting older. I can't be running around like a kid anymore doing all. I just thought it was just age. It was just age. You make up reasons in your head to kind of justify things around you. But now I know better. So, I mean, that's a good thing. Like I kept telling myself I want an answer before I went because I hate not knowing. And I feel like a lot of times um, we go to the doctor and they give us a I don't know answer and then they just order tests. And you just never know, like, everything. I've been tested for everything, and it's just like, no, everything's good with you. I remember calling last summer when I had one of the rashes on my legs. I called my primary care, and she was like, oh, well, can you send me a picture on my chart? And I remember trying to send her one of the pictures, and she responded to the photo saying, I don't know what I'm looking at. Like, I don't see anything. And I think an additional issue with that is the fact that I am tan in complexion, medium tan, and sometimes redness doesn't show up in photographs or it does show up. But if you don't know what you're looking at, you can't see the difference between maybe the the pink peachiness of my undertone and an actual red that's on my skin. Maybe you don't know the difference of that if you're not familiar with <laughs> different colors you know what I mean like a black person can have a rash and to them they can recognize the redness in their skin that maybe somebody who's not familiar they don't even see that so I think that was part of the problem too my primary care's response was like I don't really know what I'm looking at when the allergist had already seen it in my chart and she already had you know she let me talk in the visit but you could tell on her face she already knew what was wrong with me she was just kind of letting me go through the motions. And she was like, yeah, I looked over everything, you know? And she knew exactly. She was like, I've seen rashes look like this. I've seen rashes look like that. You know, I think, you know, on different kinds of people. But I think the what I see that you have is this thing. So, and I trust her. I feel like sometimes personally... I feel like sometimes I trust nurse practitioners or like physicians assistants more than I trust doctors because in this day and age of medicine, and this is just maybe just from knowing from being on the other side, the nurse practitioners tend to deal more with the day-to-day. -day. Doctors tend to know just their like specialty or they they pay closer attention to their specialty. And especially if they're like surgical doctors, not all doctors are surgical doctors, but they can recognize stuff that has to do more with surgical things. But sometimes a nurse practitioner can be a little bit more like a generalized doctor with specialty. They catch things that sometimes primary carers don't even catch. We have a nurse practitioner that was just so thorough and she used to catch things all the times that primary care doctors just don't have the time to do because 
I feel like a lot of times primary care doctors, they can win there and they have their checklist. They're like, okay, to do a physical, we're going to do X, Y, and Z. We're going to run these blood tests. Everything is going to be very standardized. And then we're going to say, see you later. Whereas I feel like nurse practitioners, especially really good ones, especially ones who work in different specialties, they know how to find the things that stand out. And I just felt like she was very thorough and she was really good with me. She definitely knew what she was talking about. I felt like her confidence and it made me feel confident. We're going to go on with this lip liner from ABH. This is parchment. I don't line my lips very often because I kind of have a natural lip line and I don't like my peak here because the side has like a double little thing going on and the side's pointed so they don't match. But anyways, you know what? I don't care. I don't care. An interesting thing that I thought about after like since being at the doctor and I'm thinking back more about all the things that have gone on over the years that I've complained about. I remember complaining to my husband, my mom, everybody, my coworkers, complaining to my doctor that I was feeling ill. Like I would go through the whole day feeling fine, go to work, feel fine, have my lunch. And then by the time it was like 4.30 and I was leaving for the day, I would feel so sick. I would feel and not sick like, oh, I'm feeling nauseous, I want to throw up. I would feel sick in the way like very tired, lethargic almost, like feeling like body ache. Again, feeling like feverish without a, like just not feeling well. And I would lay down and I'd feel like helpless to my family because I'm like, I'm too exhausted to help. And the truth of the matter is every day at lunch, guess what I did? I needed to get out of my office. So I'd go for a walk. I'm sure a lot of you can relate, like being in a work office and feeling like, oh, I've been in this room all day long. I don't have windows, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go out for a walk. And I'd walk around the entire campus. Our hospital was close to like a lake. So I'd walk down to the lake and then I walk back around and I would do that in spring all the way to the fall. I was probably exposing myself to the sun sitting on a bench, text messaging friends, scrolling on Instagram, sitting in the sun, feeling great. And by four o'clock, I was having these issues, not realizing that it was probably, you know, I'm thinking, was it something I ate? Was it something I did? Am I just like, did I not sleep enough last night? And it was probably just me being sensitive to the sun and not really putting that together. I just feel like sometimes life is just so crazy. I'm very happy that I went to see the doctor and I'm gonna stay up with going to see the doctor and making, taking care of myself priority because, you know, as I said before, my daughter had a foot injury and I kind of just put it out of my head. And last summer when I was having all those issues, you know, I probably was thinking it's summertime. I don't want to go to the doctors. I want to go to the beach. I want to go on vacation. I want to go to Six Flags. I'm, you know what? I'm just going to feel, take a nap. I'll feel better in an hour and we're going to go to the movies. We're going to go get ice cream. We're going to do this, that, and the third. It's not fun going to make an appointment. You know, you'd want to take a day off from work to do something enjoyable. You don't want to take a day off from work to go see, sit in a waiting room, finding something out that you don't really want to know. I'm mad at myself for not wearing this eyeshadow palette like sooner. I've literally had it since Black Friday, and it is a shame because this is absolutely, absolutely stunning. Well, I am going to do more videos using some palettes for my pile of shame and sprinkle in some new products here and there. I'm not going to be doing too many makeup reviews like I've done previously in the past. I just feel... Like, I'm buying things when I feel inspired to. Not to say that I haven't bought anything. I did pick up the Scooby-Doo Glam Light collection. I did pick up the new Charlotte Tilbury. I did purchase the Tom Ford Island um, Haze, but that's not going to come till later. Um, so, you know, I have been shopping, but I'm not buying everything under the sun. So, yeah, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I want to thank you so much for hanging out in this video. It's probably really scrambled and weird, but I appreciate you hanging out with me. And until next time, I love you guys. Bye.